Hello, hi, how's it in the name of Jesus Christ? How are you doing? It's your girl Cranky. I hope you're good, I hope you're peachy, I hope you're stiller, and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If you're not, welcome to the party. Are we not all just suffering something these days? Okay, so today is the 29th of March. Ooh, sorry. Mm, today's the 29th of March 2024. Um, and uh, it's just, yeah, I'm going through it, okay? Like, I've never experienced anything like this, but it, it kind of makes sense why I would be going through this. I never expected, though, to go through more of what I've already been through in increasing measure, more prolific, more extreme. But anyway, we're going to get into that just now. Let me just put some caveats out there. Kindly look out for my captions. They're not always accurate. Sometimes they use a small G for God, so they're not reverential. Sometimes they are inaccurate um, or the wrong word. Please, I, I like them there, so I keep them. One day I'll edit them, and so it'll be better to read them. Uh, but I just like them because I think they add to the aesthetics. But I'm, I'm literally too small on YouTube to be investing in editing an hour's worth of captions or more or less. I don't know, whatever. Uh, also, I'm potentially wearing app makeup. If I am, you'll know because it's going to keep bouncing off my face. It's an application. So don't freak out, don't fret, and don't front. Uh, I'm not shape shifting. Uh, that's if I'm wearing it. If I'm not, then you'll know as well. And then, uh, what else? Oh, yeah, I have a segment. I'm only human after all. Like, I pinch my cheeks and stuff. I'm only human. After all, I'm only human, after all. Essentially to bring a blush on my cheeks to show you that I'm a human being. I've got hemoglobin that makes my blood red. And when you prick me, I bleed. If you punch me, I say, ouch. If you hurt me, I will likely respond with the way that people generally respond. Anyway, don't know if you saw that. If you didn't, tomorrow's another day. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, God willing, of course. All right. The Christian journey is a journey, okay? If the Lord, whatever the Lord, not if, whatever the Lord has set apart for you to go through as a child of the living God, you will go through it. And God has a thing about his glory. I like to say that. He, he loves to, when you do finally get that gold medal on your little podium, he loves for there to be a fireworks display in the sky that says God did it. Um, so he gives us this like, Herculean, Achillean strength that is frankly bizarre. It is shocking. It's miraculous. And it's obviously not of us when we finally conquer and get to the other side. And so you can't really plan for it. You can't foresee it um, because of the fact that it's just so incredibly Herculean. It's just, it's a might that is not obviously of us. The devil is a being that has power. And his power exceeds that of human beings, of mere mortals. Because he's supernatural and he is spiritual in a way that we are finite in this time and space, restricted to the laws of this time and space of ours. So the things that he can do are frankly ornate. They're showy in comparison to what we can do. And those who trust him, those who lean on his antics, are then also awarded little nitbits, bite-sized amounts of supernatural power that we cannot perform as human beings. And so these people feel like they've got this oomph. They feel like they've got this might. They feel like they've got these juices that the rest of us don't have. And so they walk around these uneasy streets, disquieting the rest of us, regular folk, with all of their supernatural power, with all of their mighty works that are unexplainable by time and space. And in so scaring us, cause us to cower. Because how in the world do you deal with a supernatural being being a natural being? How in the world do you deal with somebody that has all these funny ornate powers, these superpowers, these meta-human powers? How do you deal with them as a, as a mere mortal? Have you seen, indeed, uh, what is the science fiction shows where there's like superhuman people with meta-powers, with metaphysical powers? Yeah, they tend to be ostracized in society you know, persecuted somewhat because people just don't know how to deal with them. They're too powerful for the regular man on the street. They, they imagine them destructive because how are you going to handle this meta human with their laser beam eyes as a regular person that really cannot conquer such a power as that? Yeah, people in the occult are ones who have watched much too, m much too many science fiction television shows and then imagined that they are Mystique or Charles Xavier 
or whoever and so or rogue they they think that they they have all these superhuman powers that don't nobody you know be able to come up against them concerning until they meet other hu meta humans <laughs> until they encounter other metaphysical beings until they happen upon unconquerable undefeatable meta human beings because they have gone to the source of the creator of metaphysical power jesus christ they have gone to the lord god almighty and so they're seated in heavenly places with christ jesus and when then they meet these other meta humans that belong to god man how they go to war with us man how they hate us the most the kingdom of darkness absolutely loathes the christians because we're the only people in society that also have meta powers however ours are responsibly tapped into because we go through god and we don't just do bizarre things in this physical time and space in order to prove that we're powerful all we do is get down on our knees and pray and we commune with a holy god and we respect the laws that he has given us to operate in in our little time and space earth we respect that we should not be poking and prodding into the cosmos opening little wormholes for funny little demons to come in and haunt our houses with poltergeist activity when the holy spirit is flowing through a home your cups and saucers are not going to fly neither are you going to be able to declare that the light in the room switch on and off no you're going to stand up as a christian because that's how responsible god is with powers that he gives christians you're going to stand up and you're going to switch on the light or maybe clap your hands because you got that little funny thing going down but you're going to switch on the light yourself because god works by providence but people in the occult pride themselves in being able to say light come off and the lights come off so they cause flickerings of lights in houses poltergeist activity yeah they they, they pride themselves in causing a doll to move from one place to the next they pride themselves in being able to cause car accidents on the road remotely without being there at the scene having committed murder and yet there is no smoking gun they pride themselves in stuff like that whereas what we do is what god will have us do operate responsibly within a time and space earth that he has put us in as human beings and only tap into supernatural power through one mediator who is jesus christ who gives us the holy spirit and he's the one that then moves things spiritually into the physical space by either providence or a miracle indeed that gets performed but in a way that is not irresponsible for crying out loud so we can't just say let there be a dead jabu on the street and then jabu just passes away we go to god on some jabu is the bane of my existence i don't know what in the world to do and we pray for years while god gives jabu grace while god gives jabu mercy while god awards jabu magnanimity an opportunity to turn around and do a better thing and after jabu is the bane of the existence of never mind garabo but all of south africa for long enough then the lord will be like enough is enough jabu like Pablo Escobar, this is your due date. It's over now. Then the Lord, not Karabo, cuts the silver cord of Jabu. Jabu then passes away in a car accident caused by God. Not by Karabo's demonic ritual, but by God after 10 years from the first time that Karabo complained about Jabu. And in that time, Jabu was awarded common grace. He was awarded an olive branch. He was given an opportunity to repent, do a better thing. He was evangelized and he was given multiple choice, uh, chances, even by said Karabo, just like David with Saul. Karabo even prayed for Jabu and stayed her hand from finishing Jabu off when she had Jabu in her line of sight to finish off, but then decided that, no, I'm going to let you live. You know how David had said, like, could kill her twice. He was able to basically end Saul, but he decided to give him mercy. Yeah, and then Saul goes and dies by dump jumping on his own sword later on because the death of Saul was orchestrated by a painfully retribute of God that, however, awards a great deal of mercy in the run up too that's how christianity works it's neat it's clean and it comes in a nice little gift box it does not escape the parameters of our precious planet but people in the kingdom of darkness operate extraneously from this earth of ours therefore causing hauntings eerie little strange things that scare everybody bump in the night christianity is not scary whenever the miracles of god happen people cry in awe they don't run in fear yeah that's what's good but the works of the occult are ornate because they belong to a devil that's trying to show that he's got supernatural power uh because indeed he needs to be all that showy he needs to be all that ostentatious in order for people to believe that he is more powerful than god and that's how he deceives the world right while god works with us through providence and with us honoring the laws of nature that he gave us within this earth of ours mm -mm. 
uh, people in the occult see the shiny miracles of the devil, the counterfeit ones that are, like I said, full of fireworks displays, all different kinds of tricks up some people's sleeves. Yeah, people look at the comparison between the tranquility and the peace of Christianity and the very loud rock music concert displays of power that you see in the occult and they think that that's true power because ours is much too tranquil to actually be true power until those who are just in chill mode vibes chilling hanging out like a low fee concert with jesus christ are just swaying left to right very peacefully and with a great deal of tranquila yeah that's what's good yeah they, they underestimate us because we're all chill we're all patient and stuff we wait right for what we want in prayer it's not instant it's not microwave it's not put it inside like i said a microwave and instantly get yourself some cooked chicken except we all know how chicken in the microwave tastes like rubber versus when it's been nicely left to thaw on the kitchen counter following which it was then it, it then gets put in an oven yeah massive difference between microwave chicken and chicken made the right way but people in the occult in the run-up to them tasting real chicken basically like chicken that you make the right way yeah they are here flaunting their rubbery chicken that has missed the point altogether because it was just thrown into the microwave straight out of the deep freezer still frozen because somebody was trying to eat like real fast mm, yeah you 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 flail in your front and you ma masquerade this counterfeit present this counterfeit gift that you got from satan while we are still waiting for the chicken to thaw first and foremost on the kitchen counter and then only marinate it and then only put it in the oven and then only eat and before we even eat it's gotta cool down because we don't want to burn our lips or whatever yeah that whole time while we're waiting for perfectly made gourmet chicken they are flailing all of their counterfeit presents in our faces causing a great deal of deception in whomever is also impatient therefore recruiting a whole bunch of sus unsuspecting souls into the kinema darkness because they have made an observation of the quick wins that you gain in the occult albeit being kind of freaky scary eerie type quick wins they're weird looking but like you know they're fast and who doesn't like fast food until you realize that it doesn't even rot because what's in it everybody knows mcdonald's food does not rot mm. strange stuff are you going in your stomach but anyway whatever that's what goes down and so we get this epidemic of growth of occult magic all over these streets bubbling popping up everywhere like a burst sewer in some uncomfortable untaken care of neighborhoods where there is not sufficient service delivery by the government and then people start to feel some kind of uncomfortable way when these burst sewage pipes stank yeah you guys in the occult have had your own little occult revival if you want to call it that mm. a whole burgeoning of magic power people being thirsty hungry for supernatural power and so they turned to the devil because you were able to show them miracles first yeah and they created a little occult revival the occult revival of which causing so many people to join the occult then of course increased a severity of demonic oppression in a nation yeah it increased crazy craziness in a nation and made the country cray cray yeah made south africa kind of you know weird looking yeah it caused our country to make lycia and swing on a chandelier on a chandelier fly like a bird with no regard for rules and then everything just kind of falls apart the economy crackles husbands beat some wives children pass away abortion right rates skyrocket hiv pandemic skyrocket numbers of all things nasty skyrocket suicides uh key teenagers making their first little prison break because of the fact that they decided that they're gonna go and commit crimes while they're still babies but they then they think go to their michael schofield so then they break out of prison that happens that happens just like you know tabo pesta type setup thing go and grab a doctor and make her a little animal uh and that then gets busted in another country that happens over like what 10 15 years however long it happens this occult revival that darkens the country plastering the nation that is south africa with what would be the equivalent of like i don't know a prince of south africa just like in the book of daniel with the prince of persia out here lodging over a whole nation like a whole principality just blooming making like a flower chilling on a country yeah therefore blinding the minds of men and women on the ground causing them to be dastardly in their general disposition 
unable to love one another, totally cold, uncouth, unloving, frankly abominable, dastardly, but I mean, you can't just kill an entire country, can you? Especially not when there's Job, Noah, and Daniel in it. Yeah, the Lord will have mercy on a land, especially if there are Christians therein. But with this like bubbling occult revival causing entire princes of South Africa to launch over, over villages in the Bundus, over all of provinces, over entire cities, over Johannesburg, Gulf Air, like just like a whole blobby principality, causing people to not think straight. Yeah, there then is a disincentive for people to turn to Jesus Christ because of the level of persecution that then appears to be rising in the country against Christians. Yeah, why? Because there was an occult revival. There was an occult revival. They burgeoned, they boxed they showed people rubbery microwave chicken, and for a season they temporarily liked it. They did. And so now we've got all this underestimation of the faith that was handed down to our forefathers, just like our grandmother Lois, like in the book of Timothy. Yeah, first or second Timothy, I stand corrected. Yeah, we got given this amazing faith, but now people are walking away from it. Mixing Christianity with ancestral worship, mixing Christianity with dastardly witchcraft, mixing Christianity with all different kinds of weird things that go bump in the night. And with there being fewer and fewer people turning their lives over to the true God or holding on to the true God, there then becomes this like massive disincentive to be a Christian because then, like I said, it gets persecuted, it gets frowned upon. People look at you like you're just this weirdo, this little creepy thing that doesn't quite get that hello, the times are changing. So we get more and more ostracized as true believers, causing therefore a disincentive, like I said, in those who are looking at our lives. And then tell themselves that this Christianity of yours is old school and it also has no regard for all of our ancient gods. All of our African spirituality gods has no regard for it. And like I said, it does not pay off Karabo because look at you be hated by the whole office. Look at you be disliked by everybody in the netball team. Look at you, look at you, look at you. So Christians become increasingly unpopular for no other reason than the fact that there's an occult revival. Yeah, and so when we hold on to our guns, we not only get ostracized, but then now too, because we've got, like I said, powers from on high, we're seated in heavenly places with the man Christ Jesus. We come with the power of the Lord. Mm. So we're like meta-humans, but the ones that are originally kind of underestimated at first. Mm. And now people who are walking with all this occult magic, waving these wands all over the show. Yeah, they don't want competition. If you belong to a different uh, kingdom, especially to a different kingdom, they're going to give you grief. They give each other grief. I mean, they're always warring with each other. Like it's Star Wars in the kingdom of darkness. Like witches be out your butchering witches. You guys know that happens, right? They have no self-control. Kingdom is constantly divided. So that's why it doesn't stand ultimately. But I'm getting to that point. But they don't only come against each other, bewitching one another to make sure that they don't get anywhere. Mm. Man oh man, how they've got such massive bones to pick with this other kingdom. These little goody two-shoes, they can't stand us. Yeah, because we're like the teacher's pet, hey? We're the people that are responsible with power, with supernatural power. We're the people that are responsible with, with, with spirits. Mm. We're the people that handle with care. We're the people that take a fire and make a fireplace instead of burn a house down yeah and they can't stand it they can't stand i mean who likes a teacher's pet you know how annoying that girl was in school that was always carrying the teacher's books always carrying the teacher's laptop always walking around with the teacher asking ma'am is there anything i can do for you Ugh, you can't stand her yeah yeah so they don't like us because of the fact that we've walked away from the darkness so they heap abuse on us like it's written in the book of first peter or is it yeah first peter four or is it second i stand corrected but they abuse us because we're teacher's pets yeah, we belong to God and we're responsible with power, mm, with might, with spirituality. We are responsible. We just get on our knees very responsibly and pray and ask the Lord to effect all the miracles that he can under heaven. Mm, effect. We don't take matters into our own hands. And on top of that, we're always just kind of waiting. We're always just waiting. We're always just waiting. We're like Sandra D. Yeah. Have you seen the movie Grease? There is this virgin girl there that they keep on dissing. They mock her. They call her Sandra D. They even sing her a song. And they say to her, Look at me, I'm Sandra D. Bursting with virginity. Won't go to bed till I'm lawfully wed. It's me, I'm Sandra D. And they're constantly trying to get you to be like, Goodbye to Sandra. 
D because everybody gotta break their virginities now. Mm. Christians are like the girl in high school that's holding on to her virginity because she's not that girl. And everybody that's having sex can't stand the living daylights out of her. Like I told you, the virgin and the teacher's pet. Totally annoying. Goes home after school on time, always honors curfew, always does homework, can't stand her. So they heap abuse on us. We've got power in all of that what they call restrictiveness but you see we're not restricted we've got we've got power over sin we have got mastery thank you that's the word i was looking for that caused me to pause there for a moment yeah we've got mastery over sin something that people on earth just don't have unless they turn to jesus christ when we get born again we are set free from slavery to sin slavery to this body of death and we put it to war by the holy spirit that we might be able to have mastery over sin so we can patiently wait for answered prayer instead of microwave gratification instant gratification we are full of patience we are gentle we're relaxed we're maxing out and we trust an invisible god to basically effect supernatural power on our behalf mm that's what we do but all these other people don't have mastery over sin they just grab what they want they have got a foolishness that is dark it's overt but to them it's the wisdom of this world it's yolo you only live once so grab it all just run yeah do what you want for really and truly that's the whole of the law mm. people who think that it's actually powerful to just be a loose cannon like see a swinging on a chandelier on a chandelier you're gonna fly like a bird in the sky with no inhibitions at all you that gangster that's gonna swing on a chandelier on a chandelier yeah, so here is like Sia swinging on a chandelier, thinking that she's got true freedom until you realize that she doesn't have true freedom because she absolutely, for the life of her, can't stand, thanks to a low-key covetousness, the chick who has got mastery over swinging on a chandelier, on a chandelier. Yeah, the chick who just chooses not to do that, somehow threatens her. She feels intimidated by her for no other reason than the fact that she is not swinging on a chandelier, even though it is apparently fun to swing on a chandelier. She's out here then lambasting with abuse, the chick that's not trying to be on no chandelier. The chick that's not trying to swing left to right on a tree like Tarzan, watch out for the bar tree. The chick that's not interested in doing anything on that of that nature you would imagine that seeing as it's so much fun to just have no inhibitions let yourself run loose in these streets you would imagine that you would leave her in her tiresome boring disposition alone but instead she doesn't get left alone there is like a whole mission on the side by these swingers on a chandelier on a chandelier yeah to cause her to swing on a chandelier I mean, is it not fun to swing on a chandelier? It is. So when a person doesn't want to have fun, is it not one of those, oh, oh, your loss? It should be, right? Just tell them, your loss. Just let them go. But somehow, strangely, they don't want to let them go. They don't want to let the teacher's pet go. They are disinterested in letting the teacher's pet squander her life. Just wasted on all this boring activity, being such a goody two-shoes. Why are you insistent that Sandra D should break her virginity if having sex outside of marriage is so much fun? Really, if she's gonna miss out on all that fun, let her. She's the one that's gonna wake up one day when she's 79 and severely regret not having sex with 10 boys in high school, right? That's your mindset. That's the mindset of the world. So just let her get to a point of severely regretting not breaking her virginity with the jock on the school playground when she's just 15. Let her. Let her go on right ahead and squander her youth all of her beauty all of her young years on just this boring mundane monotonous no-brainer life you would imagine that seeing as it's so much fun to do all these things where you're swinging on a chandelier that you just leave the boring chick alone to basically lose out on her life but instead you poke and you prod away at her you tease her you mock her you gratuitously violate her out of nowhere unwarranted you're always just pouncing on her like a little beast making like your daddy the devil looking for whomever to devour you won't leave her alone you you could seeing as apparently she's missing out but you won't evidencing that there is a power a mastery that she has that you lack mm. evidencing that there is something she's onto that you have quite not that you have not quite gotten onto the point of which you have utterly missed evidencing that there is something she's doing right 
the teacher's pet you can't stand her to a point of trying to influence her by peer pressure or by attrition whatever might be your methodology perhaps you start out trying to gently influence her into sin but when then she doesn't want to do it now you become all coercive yeah the fact that you're trying to do that displays that there is a severity of disquiet inside you about swinging on a chandelier on a chandelier there is something that makes you uneasy about that you know what it is mm. it's written in god's word that the law of the lord is on our heart like the tablets of moses as he came down from that mountain there horeb 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 horara yeah that mountain those tablets yeah they're on our hearts they were always there but the Lord had to give the law to Moses in order to basically condemn the Hebrews, condemn the world at large with what it is that they already knew. It's written in God's word that the Lord did not pass down the law to save man, but to condemn us because it was already chilling on our hearts. But if God did not bring it down to us on a tablet from Horeb, mm, yeah, we would have been like, I didn't know. I don't know we would have played dumb we would have defamed decide ourselves we would have basically patronized god by saying at the great white throne judgment but like i didn't know that murder was wrong <laughs> and adultery and out you're trying to take my neighbor's ox i don't know i don't know so you can't judge me for it mm. the lord is wise so he gave us the law but the law was written on our hearts literally all the way going back to adam and eve's fall it was there that law is what spurs up in your conscience to feel uneasy when you slap a person that didn't have it coming. When you trip up and un unnecessarily some child on the school playground, when you cheat in an exam, that's what makes you feel all uneasy. It's the law of God written on your heart. That guilty conscience, that thing that makes you realize... The thing that makes you realize that you're in quite a bit of danger, that uh, things are not going to, uh, you know, bode well for you if you continue in this fashion. The thing that makes you conceal your dingy, dark deeds in the pitch of night. The thing that makes you go into the bushes in your neighborhood and light up a blunt of marijuana that's got nails and nyaube and, and JS fluid in it instead of just lighting up that blunt right there in the lounge in front of your dad yeah the thing that makes you go into the bush in your neighborhood is that law written on your heart you just know it's wrong you just know it's wrong you know that you should not be smoking that blunt you should not be smoking those cigarettes you should yeah you just know so you hide it's the thing that makes you hide the stash of alcohol in some conspicuous little corner of your car instead of bringing it into your kitchen cabinet for your husband and your children to see when you're an alcoholic yeah the conscience the law of god is written on your heart you know what's wrong guys and you also know what is right and so because of your acute awareness of what's wrong and what's right according to god's word in romans 1 you are without an excuse you don't have a reason to walk up and down in these streets bouncing up and down like a kamikaze kangaroo because you're also suicidal saying that i don't know acting like shaggy saying it wasn't me even though the lord saw you on the counter is that basic Mm. your consciences speak volumes to you because those consciences are inspired by that law of god written on your hearts the invisible qualities of god are also all over creation all this beauty is it uh, neil armstrong said it he sees trees are green red roses too he see them bloom for me and you and he thinks to himself it's not neil neil is the one that went to the moon louis what a wonderful world when then you see those trees bloom red roses too you see them bloom for me and you and you think to yourself what a wonderful world uh next to that conscience of yours that tells you that you should probably not light up a blunt of marijuana in front of your parents those two things combined together are the reason why you deserve every ounce of hellfire that's going to scorch your nasty behind for all of eternity yeah but the lord knew he knew 
right? That you would claim that, but you didn't know that it was wrong. So he gave us the law in written form. He gave us the word of God. He gave us first, you know, those tablets. And then there's all this holy writ in the Bible. He gave us the scriptures. And now next to your scriptures, alongside the law of God written on your hearts, alongside what a wonderful world, you still go on right ahead and hate Sandra D. Bursting with virginity. Won't go to bed till she's lawfully wed. I don't know, oh Sandra D, and you want to be like goodbye to Sandra D. You want to do away with Sandra D because somehow you want to smear that conscience of yours with I don't know darkness. You want to like burn it with a hot iron. You want to sear your own conscience so that you can feel nice and comfortable about going to a hell you hope desperately you don't go to because you're holding on to nothing but I don't know hope hope. Okay, you're holding on to nothing but let's just hope that there is no such thing as either God or a God that judges or a God that's holy. Let's just hope that he's going to be a God in my own making, otherwise known as an idol. Mm, that's what's good. Even though you think to yourself when you wake up in the morning and open the window to your apartment and see those beautiful skyscrapers in your beautiful concrete jungle apartment in your beautiful city. What a wonderful world. Oh, yeah. All those skyscrapers evidencing all that architecture that evidences all that creativity that evidences all that creator that gave mankind that creativity to build those beautiful buildings in your concrete jungle where you live in Johannesburg or New York like Alicia Keys. Mm. Okay, very well. You who are thinking to yourself that this wonderful world somehow you can be able to walk right past it like there's absolutely nothing at all that you must pay mind to concerning it. You abuse the person who admits that that concrete jungle where things are made of mm, is the work of an original creator. The person who not only admits that it's the original creator that did that in humanity to architect such beauty Mm -hmm. but also decides that they're gonna honor him because it's just pointless once you have found out that there is a god it's pointless not to worship him once you find out that there is a an intelligent creator it's pointless because what are you doing dishonoring the individual that can crush you underneath his finger because you've decided to just disregard all the glory that he's put in you mm. It doesn't make sense as foolishness altogether to be either an atheist or a theistic human being that's not trying to find out what that deity that you absolutely admit exists, yeah, wants from you. When, when you're not trying to find out, you are a fool. Because that deity who created you also has got veto power entirely over your eternal state. He can take you one place or the other. And if you don't want to find out what he wants, I apologize. Like the majority of the planet is theistic and yet the majority of the planet goes to hell because they're not trying to find out what this God that created this wonderful world oh, yeah, wants. Mm. And a lot of y'all are theistic. However, careless to pay mind to the consciences inside yourselves that are telling you what I'm doing is wrong to a point of inducing so much guilt that you're literally close to tears and yet you're ignoring it, you're smothering it, you're smearing it, you are spraying cologne on it like it's cancer or like feces or whatever, yeah? And you are putting a band-aid on it like it's cancer. Yeah, that's what's good without actually going for any real true treatment. You are not even trying for the life of you to <laughs> figure out what a holy God wants from you. Instead, you walk around with your machinations in order that you might bring low Sandra D, bursting with virginity, that stupid teacher's pet that you can't stand because she's just such a boring little nitwit of a nutbag of a suck up. We are suck ups to you guys. And the only reason you afflict us so incredibly terribly is because you want to invalidate the reality of what it is that you're going to experience for all of eternity by causing us to join you in your bandwagon, therefore confirming a lie from the pit of hell that we have got absolutely no mastery, no self-control over our insanity. You want to believe that we're just beasts 
that all we are are these primates, just animals that can do nothing but capitulate to their basest or, or to their most basic instincts. You want to believe that it's only natural, you know? Human beings always like to drop down to that level of nonsensical reasoning to say that I'm just human every time they do a stupid thing. I'm only human. Well, allow me to help you understand something about this humanity of yours according to God. Yeah, we are born dead in trespasses and sins and in sins did our parents conceive us. Our most righteous works according to the king of the universe are like filthy rags. There is no one of us who does good, not even one. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Not only that, catch this one in your general direction. Our hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So, I mean, to just say to yourself when you're doing a strange little macabre thing that I'm only human is only to validate your slavery to that humanity and how you're in dire need of a savior from that humanity. You are in dire need of a savior from that humanity. And when then you don't try to figure out what the savior wants of you, seeing as he is obviously God, you're dumb. You're dumb. You're foolish. You're nihilistic. It is utterly obscure and obtuse to choose not to find out what in the world under heaven an intelligent creator expects of you, given how much you fall short, given how much you cannot control yourself into doing what is reasonable towards your fellow man so much so that you keep on coming up with this excuse called I'm only human. Yeah, exactly. You're only human, you're but a worm, a mere mortal, a slimy little thing that needs to be thrown into Gehenna, needs to be thrown into Sheol, needs to be thrown into Hellfire, Lake of Fire. Let the smoke of your torment rise up forever and ever because the impure human thing that you are cannot be in the sight of God for eternity without being propitiated for. You are in dire need of having a human being that was both God and man that did not capitulate to all of your basic instincts and yet died an unjust death for all of his purity. In order to cover your impurity, you need him to impute for your sins. You need him to stand in the gap for your sins. You need him to cover all your filth that you might be able to stand pure and rectified, straightened, before a holy God that will then on that day find you acceptable because literally his son is standing in front of you and his blood has drenched you like a deluge. And that's the only reason why now you can be taken in the bosom of a loving father that no longer sees you as the wormy little human that you always have been. Mm. But like all that truth, human individuals, no thank you that's you no thank you you out your mocking teasing sandra d bursting with virginity you who cannot stand the teacher's pit yeah you can't stand that teacher's pit because you want it to be utterly erroneous that you and that basic instinct of yours that's taking you to the flames of hell is not really happening you want to believe that that's not happening so the best way to validate to yourself that you're not going to hell even though you suspect with every bone in your body that you are is to cause everyone that's obviously looking like they're going to heaven to do what you're doing. You try to grab the rest of the human race that's out you're holding on for dear life to the pearl of great price. They've sold everything that they own in order to acquire this great pearl because it's literally worth it. They have gathered for themselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy. They've discovered that the road is narrow that leads to life and very few people find it. And they are happy to be among the one or two or three negligible souls that you can count on your one hand. Yeah, that are going to heaven. They are therefore striving and they are beating their flesh into submission by the spirit putting to death the deeds of their bodies working out their own salvation with fear and trembling striving to make their calling and election sure lest they should be called and not chosen doing all this that they might indeed validate to a holy god that they've been testing to see if they're in the faith who knows lest you should fail such a test as that you look at these human beings and they scare the living daylights out of you cause you to shake in your pantyhose and your reaction to all of your shaking pantyhose disposition is to try and make them realize that really it's not that deep garabo it's really not that intense lady chica come on relax just drink a little bit of this wine and you'll be good as rain just like the rest of us 
trying to go and drag a lady out here, running the race, fighting the good fight, keeping the faith that she might be told, well done, good and faithful servant. You want to cause this chick to pull out of the comrades marathon. Is that what we're doing right now? Oh, slothful servant you, out here, causing traffic on the side of the road because your car's not moving. That's what's good. Yeah, you want to go and grab a person that's working tirelessly for the kingdom of the universe, for the, for the king of the universe, for the kingdom of heaven. You want to cause them to come down to your seedy little level at the height of your conviction that you're in trouble. Proper. You are scared out of your mind. Pantyhose are just shaking in it. Urinating, that's what's going on on the spot incontinent unsure as to what's gonna happen at that height of conviction all that disquiet in your bones feeling like mm -mm, this ain't gonna end well at that point you still want to go and grab the goody two shoes and make her nasty like you that's the thing that's gonna you feel like that's your cure you feel like that's gonna be the bandage on your particular wounds the wounds of your guilty conscience, the wounds of your fear as to what happens when you die, you think you're going to be able to bandage them. You probably think that you're going to be able to dress your own wounds by causing a Christian to apostatize. Is that it? Is that what we're doing over here? Are you causing a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ to walk away from the Lord? And once this chick has decided to go and basically consume all her vomit once more, to go and just wallow in the mud like an Olympic diver all over again, like a piggy going back to the mire after it has been washed. Once you have caused Garabo to do all that, you seriously think that that guilty conscience that is clobbering you to death with blunt force trauma, you seriously think it's going to flee, dissipate? I'm sorry, honey, this is what's good. You are born with it. The Lord is so merciful that he gives you that for a conscience from the beginning of your life. And when then you work tooth and nail like a little injured dog. Mm, yeah. To get rid of it. That you might feel comfortable in your fallen state. You're in danger. You know why? Because people like that, God eventually awards them exactly what they desire. Mm. You have exchanged the truth of God for a lie. And you've given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons you have not loved the truth you have rather taken pleasure in your unrighteousness so for those reasons god is gonna do just exactly what you want let you feel absolutely zero hollow naught and ash all that conscience that tablet of moses on your heart he will allow it to be you know fuzzied like worn out like engraving that's barely legible anymore because it's been eroded away at for a minute. Yeah, the Lord will allow the braille, you blind man, you on your heart that you can feel is telling you thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not sin in so a capacity as this. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not. You're a blind man reading braille in your heart. The Lord will make all of those impressions, those protuberances that make it possible for you to feel the law of God on your heart. He will file them down. He will file them down. He will sear them as with a hot iron. He will give you your essentially wicked conscience. He will award you the tenement of a sociopathy or a psychopathy, an inability to appropriately respond to stimuli coming in from the world with the right responsible social response. You will essentially be like the conglomerate of human souls in 2 Timothy 3 and Matthew 24. 2 Timothy 3, you're going to be that lover of self, that lover of money, boastful, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, despisers of Sandra D. That's what's good. Despisers of those who do good, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, have nothing to do with such people, etc. And then in Matthew 24, it is written of you that you will grow so calloused in your increase in lawlessness that your love will then like be just absolutely nowhere to be found. Because of an increase in your lawlessness, the law of which is written on your heart but you couldn't care less about it, yeah, your love grows cold. So you become this like savage. Mm, making like Beyonce and Megan Thee Stallion, mm, priding yourselves in nastiness. It's written of you in God's word that your God is your belly and your glory and shame. So that which is nasty, you like it. Things become upside down on that day. Hey, bitter gets exchanged for sweet and good gets exchanged for evil. Then you're taken over altogether like a tsunami. And that's when you start to fall away, depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, not loving the truth, taking pleasure in your unrighteousness. And so God sends you a nice little delusion.
to make you believe that you can be as horrific as you want to be and still be cool somehow in the end because you're doing away with the one true holy god in exchange for one in your own image why because you imagine that you gotta capitulate to this body of death you think that it's only okay seeing as you're only human to do all of these random weird nasty things that you do 24 7. Mm imaginative of the fact that insofar as you can sear your conscience you absolve yourself from facing a holy god that you are going to stand in front of like a wax figurine while he is a blazing inferno and somehow stand you thoroughly imagine you're going to stand be before a perfect holy god that kept on knocking on your door all throughout your life do you understand convicting you of sin to a point of trickling a nasty little deer a tear down your nasty little cheek and yet that nasty little person that you are nastily did not repent that's what's good you cried about your sin at some point it and made you feel trashy do you understand what i'm saying despite how trashy you felt to the point of tears you swallowed them what's going on girl you done swallowed your tears that's what's good you swallowed your guilt and told yourself that you're gonna be strong i'm sorry it is weak when you don't acknowledge your conscience it is not the act of strength to ignore a horrific act that you have committed that brings about in you a conscience it is not strong to be a savage to be unfeeling to be insensitive to care less about your fellow man and to imagine stuff a necessary evil for crying out loud there is no such thing as a necessary evil not even in the slightest and yet you human beings go through life imaginative of the fact that necessary evils gotta be committed in order for you to have some kind of a semblance of a successful life because really no one lives here on earth a happy thriving successful prosperous life without tripping somebody up without hurting someone somebody gotta die in order for me to acquire and that's just the theology the theology of the devil is it not those are doctrines of demons and destructive heresies do you know that our god the king of the universe jesus christ he is the word who became flesh and dwelt among us according to god's word in that very book of john nothing in all creation was created apart from the word who became flesh and dwelt among us so essentially our god jesus christ created ex nihilo this entire planet everything in it by the breath of his mouth ex nihilo nothing something he created something out of nothing that's what ex nihilo means he created something out of absolutely nothing he made it all meaning that there's literally way more where that came from mm way more where that came from and so you can you ought to recognize you've got to see that it is a doctrine of demons and a destructive heresy to imagine that in order for you to get ahead or acquire all that you desire in this world all the bountiful material possessions you can get it is of course a destructive heresy and a doctrine of demons to believe that in order to acquire all that you've got to take it from some other people you've got to see that that's a doctrine of demons and that is the whole premise of witchcraft you've got to see it that way those of you who are busy clutching bibles underneath your armpits claiming to be christians believing in the god of the bible who made something out of nothing you thoroughly think that you have got to go and steal garabo's career in order to build yours up you've got to go and steal garabo's womb in order to go and manufacture babies for the devil you have got to go and steal garabo's husband in order for you to be successful in marriage you've got to basically in order for you to gain clout and prominence in society respect honor you've got to steal that of others that you cannot shine with three five ten other people on the left and on the right of you that you've got to be the only one when we serve a god who said ask anything in my name and it'll be given to you if my words abide in you and you remain in me anything you ask for in prayer will be awarded you the god who told you that if you ask me for a fish would i give you a serpent i mean of course not right because he's a loving father if at all the pagans need these things how much more will your heavenly father in here in he up, up above give you what you need seek ye first what the kingdom and what his righteousness and then everything else will be added to you meaning it is absolutely entirely possible for you to acquire all the clout you desire in this world without having to steal it from somebody it is possible to be a content creator that bakes cookies and be absolutely prolific next to yet another content creator that bakes cookies you don't gotta go steal the bakery of some other female is that basic but that's the concept of occult magic it is premised around theft you gotta steal people's stars and stuff you have got to take things from other human beings that you might gain your own prosperity because apparently allegedly we've got finite resources based on what and according to who hmm? 
you who are working with the natural resources that are depletable of a planet that was created by a god who created the planet out of nothing the invisible god who in and of himself is infinite and infinitely creates beautiful perfect gifts from above and from the father of heavenly lights fresh out of the box manufactured out of nothing fresh for you yeah that god who guaranteed you that level of perfect provision you pass him up in favor of some dude who rocked up like a rabbit out of a hat with a magic trick telling you i can steal 10 things there in order to give you 20 over here you then run with him this microwave chicken making satan of yours out here causing you to eat some rubbery meat mm. you have been deceived it's clear it's obvious why because all the acquisitions that you gain in this occult of yours yeah yeah they ultimately bring about like sorrow and stuff you know people loss of them and stuff beef do i not got beef with you do i not got problems with you am i not picking some bones with you i am yeah but i used to be friends with you you know last night i was thinking about as i lay in bed with all of my sorrow this one friend that i used to have that slapped me silly with a whole bunch of sorcery back in the day we used to have this society of like cheekies and we would collect monies it was like a money saving society goodness gracious i don't even know how to describe it in english nail society man this uh, lady chica one minute this lady chica introduced me and my other friends to two other females that were from outside of the crew of, of girlfriends to join us in the society and i chose to go last because it's always nice to go last you know mm. to receive the collection of monies that we would exchange over like a 12 month period or whatever and one two of the those two chicks that she introduced to us did not pay me when it was my turn to receive my money I was out here pulling out my hairs, sending them emails, sending them messages, text messages and all that jazz and they were ignoring me. Ultimately, one of them, after like two months, finally did give me my money. But then the other one told herself that she's gonna just run with my money, just like that, like a whole bandit. And this girl, she used to go to, uh, she was a, a nursing student at Vits, And we went to her residences at Vits scared as we were we tricked the security guard to let us go in because we also looked like we were students and we fetched this chick we fetched her and we basically threatened her i was ungodly at the time i was not born again yet but we made like little gangsters out here collecting bounty do you understand and she had to go and collect little mini 100 rand notes from as many people in the res where she was staying as she possibly could in order to come up with the 700 rand that she owed me yeah because my friend and i went there together holding bats okay so we didn't have bats but we had a very intimidating disposition and we told her we're not leaving here until you give garabo her money and last night i thought about that whole endeavor and i was like girl you done helped me handle some bandit running away with money and then years down the line you steal mine you helped me get justice once upon a time against some thieving female and now you that thief all I could think about was we were friends. That's just the thing. Out of greed, she decided to go and steal much of my things, whatever they were. She decided to steal my husband. She decided to steal my career. She decided to steal all this stuff. And now all that she is left with all these years down the line is the severity of regret of not having a friend anymore. I'm out of her life, never to be recovered to her ever again. Cause I'm picking a bone. I got beef in these streets with her is that basic is that then a good and a perfect gift when the law when the law no, not when your lord small l your god the devil that's what's good awards you with the destruction of a friend's career because you're competing you could not possibly see yourself z the two of you just being these successful young women just killing it in corporate south africa together you just could not see that you had to be paramount above garabo you had to get the better everything above garabo you just could not see it in your line of sight despite initially professing christ as lord that it was actually possible for both of us to be terribly fabulous for the rest of our lives alongside each other just hopping up and down like little bunny rabbits in these streets as besties you just could not foresee that you could not foresee the two of us being provided for ex nihilo by god awesome husbands awesome children awesome careers awesome future you just had to be the only one to get it but herein lies the provision of the devil it always has fur do you understand it has thistles and thorns it has things that grow out of it like fungi and mold it's got bacteria 
It's got all different kinds of pathogens. It's got necrotizing fasciitis. It eats away at you slightly, slightly, until ultimately you have this like wound that is so gangrenous that you gotta now amputate a limb. Mm. It always comes with these nasty little terms and conditions. But these nasty little terms and conditions, just like regular fine print, a lot of people don't read it when they purchase a product at the store. They don't read the fine print. Only when stuff starts to fall apart and become all food stutzy, later on are you like oh snap should have read the fine print because now i don't have abc now i can't take it back now there's no warranty now there's no guarantee now there's yeah etc you break it you bought it walking out of a store with a broken television only for you to not be able to return it even though you bought it broken yeah there is fine print to demonic worship but y'all don't read it in the same way that there is fine print in christianity but we who are of god read it he said that count the cost of being a disciple because if you start a project and then don't finish it drop the ball somewhere along the way carabo people are gonna laugh at you for starting a project that you did not finish but if you are studious and you are berean and you count the cost of being a disciple you're going to be built upon the rock and you're going to employ my words and you're going to therefore realize that when winds and waves crash on you you will stand erect you will not fall apart why because you have held on to my word you have understood that in this world you will have much trouble but take heart i've overcome the world you will understand Understand that many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers him from them all you will understand that the world hates disciples you will understand that the Lord tests faith a crucible for silver a furnace for gold the Lord tests the heart therefore the life of a Christian will be a hard knock one however one that is also riddled with much victory you will for the sake of the kingdom of heaven lose fields homes you will lose mothers fathers brothers sisters but like you will gain a hundredfold over in this world all that which you have lost with persecutions and in the next life eternal life so it's a hard knock life however one that is also fueled with lots of victory if at all there was no need for you to be trampling serpents and scorpions underfoot i wouldn't have said that i will give you authority to do such a thing as that therefore you must anticipate serpents and you must anticipate anticipate scorpions meaning that yours is going to be a resisted journey and so upon being resisted i will then give you power under heaven to trample it underfoot to conquer it to be more than a conqueror concerning it and that no such weapon formed against you will ever prosper you're going to be the one to refute all these things and condemn them in the judgment you must however hold fast to what it is that is good and abhor what is evil because i am god and i've told you what to expect upon counting the cost of being a disciple so we anticipate that it's going to be a hard knock life but you who are not taking the words of god seriously into practice when you crack open that bible are like one who is building your house upon the sand you don't anticipate that you're supposed to wait as a christian long suffer be gentle you don't anticipate that you might just have some people who don't like you cause you're christian you expect to have a lotty dark gliding whole journey all up in this monstrosity and then when you are met with hardship just like the dude in the parable of the sower that falls away because of persecution look at you fall apart breaking some teeth and everything without there being any prospects of a dentist or an orthodontist in sight to patch you back up again because after all you have not trusted the heavenly physician here it is that you are falling apart because you built your stupid house on some sandy seas and just like a sand castle at the ocean the waves will crash into it and bring it to the ground mm. so now that you were unable to wait patiently bearing the fruit of the holy spirit of the lord jesus christ you now are looking with a great deal of covetousness all these days down the line that's what's good at Sandra D, bursting with virginity, won't go to bed till she's lawfully wed, and you're trying to make sure that Sandra D never mind breaks her virginity, but also joins a local brothel and just gives away all of her goods. Just because this is the thing that we as human beings do, because after all, with these beasts and can't help but just fornicate, 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 fornicate. All we can do is just have sex. All we can do is partake in our basest lusts. It's human nature. So you just glide in it you just capitulate in it you just imagine that what you need to do is fit a hand toward love with your sinfulness apart from a god that convicts you with the law that is on your heart that this here is not going to bode well for you if you continue in it if you continue in it you abuse us because we have left debauched lives behind and because of the fact that your stinging conscience makes it impossible for you to leave these meta humans alone your stinging conscience makes it impossible for you to leave these people who have a supernatural power just as you have one 
but that are responsible with it, that create fireplaces out of fire instead of a whole blazing inferno bringing down a building. You want us to fall back into the sins that we walked away from. So therefore, looking back after putting our hands to the plow, precisely because our apostasy you imagine is the cure to your guilty conscience. You think that by causing all of us who are holding fast to Christ the King, you think that if you can make us just as flaccid, fluffy, lukewarm, seeker sensitive, sardian, having a reputation for being alive even though you are dead just like you, that maybe then on that day you can feel safe about going to a heaven you are definitely not going to. You hope that you're going to heaven because you know you said that sinner's prayer. You hope you're going to heaven because you're more good than bad apparently. You hope you're going to heaven until you meet a consecrated Christian that is holding fast to what is good, abhorring what is evil. And you then recognize through her that you're not safe. And instead of emulating the Christ that shines in her by allowing yourself to be sanctified by him, that you might indeed also be found acceptable in the sight of God, you then try to kill her. On that day, you make the same error, seeing as there is nothing new under the sun according to God's word in the book of Ecclesiastes. You are making the same error as Cain, who coveted his brother, despite having been told by God, Ayo, sin is crouching at your door and its desire is to have you, but you must master it. And if you do what is right, will you not be rewarded? My point exactly. You know what you need to do in order that you might not covet Garabo so much. To a point of wanting to bring her down to your satanic level. Do what is right and you will be accepted before the Lord. You are a prodigal son, are you? Then go back home. Stop wallowing around in bars and brothels, having disinherited yourself from your father and get cleansed already. Let somebody cut up some animals because you came back home. But instead, you are sitting in the brothel trying to grab a son that's chilling at home with dad to come and taste a prostitute and see that it's actually really great because after all, you are capitulating to your basest inst instincts. You are taking that which is your carnal flesh and you're just running with it because that's the freest thing we can do as human beings. No, I apologize. That is the most enslaving thing that we can do as human beings. We are slaves to sin and true freedom is in being able to conquer it. For he who has been set free by the Son of Man is free indeed. He who has been set free by Jesu Creste, that's the truly free human individual in these streets because they've got freedom to recognize the folly of just gliding, swimming, floating, floating in sin. Purely because that's just how you be, yo. You were born like that, snap, like what? I was like this since I was a baby. Like, I can't help it. No, I'm sorry. No, you can. By the spirit, put to death the deeds of the body. To merely just let yourself roll around in these streets and your basic instincts is to end up bewitching your entire crew of girlfriends from high school like one of my former friends so that you can be the only one that is the biggest and better success story. That is what basically being, you know, a human being achieves. You are depraved from birth and sin. Did your parents conceive you? There is none of you who do anything good. You can't even choose God. So even the slightest iota of conviction that you have of sin, that was done for you. You were drawn by the Holy Spirit to that conviction. You can't do nothing right. So why under heaven are you trying to go and grab meta-humans that get the point that you don't get to grab supernatural power and just dilly-dally bounce around with it? You gotta be responsible with it. Why do you want to cause them to disinherit a responsible usage of fire instead of what under heaven it is that you guys are doing in the occult? You are occult practitioners. You use these ornate fireworks to mess with people, creating fear in society in a way that Christianity just doesn't. We've also got power, it's clear, in an observable capacity by the societies in which we live. And yet people do not fear us. Yet they do fear the occult. People fear the local witch. Why? Because you are impetuous. You are incontinent. You use supernatural power to scare people instead of to heal the way that Christ would have it be done, evidencing that there, there ain't no God. That there is not a God. It is a God, correction, but it's not the God, big G. It's not the God, big T, big G. It is just some counterfeit deity that knows that he has got to hook up some kind of showy, ostentatious fireworks display to convince you to ultimately consume rubbery meat instead of waiting for chicken that thaws on the kitchen counter. Gets marinated and then only gets put in the oven and for you to let it cool down first before you eat, otherwise you might burn your lips and your tongue. You know that you're walking in filth and that filth is eating you alive. And your solution to it is to cause Garaba to join the occult for real. Ew, that's all I gotta say. That filth is causing you to persecute me into oblivion, to throw more spells at me, to wear me out, to cause all this pain that I'm feeling, the headaches that are constantly just going and going and going. 
the inebriant in my body, the spiritual inebriant, just the listlessness, the feeling of, of, of foreboding that I'm feeling 24 hours a day. I am under so much spiritual attack right now that I don't know whether I'm coming or going. And it appears not to be abating. It appears to not be dissipating. And the reason that's the case is because people are trying to create a case for Satan when I've already embraced the case for Christ. They are trying to create apologetics against Christianity again to in the life of a Christian apologist. They want to grab a woman that is an apologist for Christ and through apologetics in the occult, make her see where they're coming from. If this is a debate, yo, I've already won. I've already won. Like by a landslide, this is clear. The audience has already applauded. Some of them are even at home sleeping. The way that this is such a done deal, I've already won. But the fact that you're, you're trying to force something that most of the world by now would agree, just give up, go home, you've lost. That's when people start to die. The fact that you're still trying to push that evidences that you are reprobate. You've been given a strong delusion, handed over to a debased mind. You are done for. You are so far gone that even with a very compelling argument for Jesus Christ, like the miracle on Mount Carmel by Elijah, you are still making like your mama Jezebel. May the gods deal with me ever so severely if by this time tomorrow Elijah is not like one of them. You are out here trying to create a carcass out of a person that just proved that your god is fake. I mean, duh, then on that day you're going to be the one that's going to pass away with the dogs licking your blood and the guy that you said is going to die ain't even gonna die he got raptured that is exactly what happens when you hash out a situation after someone has displayed to you time and time again that god is god serve god but no you're holding on to ancestral worship you're holding on to satan you're holding on to magic art you're holding on to garases little candles you're out you're burning trying to kill a sister girl how many times have i survived your death spells yet again i'm surviving it I, saw, I told you guys the other day, the Lord sang me a song. Bulletproof, nothing to lose. Fire away, fire away. Ricochet, shoot me down. And I get up, I am titanium. Been telling you for a minute. Like Wolverine. Yeah, I told you. We also are like, what do you call this? Like the X-Men. We're also like uh, metahumans. And um, the particular metahuman power that I'm presently wearing right now is that of Wolverine. There is a scene in one of the X-Men uh, shows. Wait, Wolverine, ne? I think it's actually a, the, the, whole, the name of the movie is Wolverine. Mm. The dude gets shot in the head. He gets shot in the head, yeah, and passes away. And because he was shot in the head, that injury t took a lot longer for him to like basically wake up, conquer. He died and he stayed down, unlike all the other wounds of his that just like spit out a bullet and quickly healed because his brain was dead thanks to him being shot in the head multiple times. He woke up after like five days or something with that bullet taking time to get out from his skull. Ultimately, it popped out of his skull and Wolverine rose from the dead. He was resurrected and he was just walking these streets again. He was walking these streets again, following which he needed to like regain his mind or something. You, if you've seen that X-Men show, yeah. Some of your attacks on me are so extreme that it's not like a shot to my heart or a shot to my shoulder or a shot to my knee. It's like a shot to my head and it takes a lot longer for me to conquer, but I always do. And right now, your bullet is coming out of my brain. It's coming out. The past two weeks have been rough. I've been wondering, God, when is this demonic attack going to end? Goodness, this is the longest lasting one. I can't deal. I can't take it. Yeah, because you keep on shooting me down, but I get up because I'm titanium. I also have a superhuman power. That's what's good. I am Lazarus over and over and over again. And that's just what Christians are to all of y'all in the occult. You keep on trying to kill us with all of your death spells, all of your mirror rituals, all of your candle burning ceremony rituals, the ceremonies that you do, the seances, all of the pentagrams that you chant and grant over. You wear us out indeed. You sometimes cause us so much extreme fatigue that we can do nothing but sleep for 24 hours. You make us walk around like logs, heavy, like Godzilla. One footstep creates an earthquake. The way we're so spiritually inebriated with attack. But then next thing, one week down the line, Chiki's out here running laps around the neighborhood. And you're like, how? You just wasted a whole bunch of resources chanting and grunting like the prophets of Baal only for Elijah to bring down the fire from heaven because he belonged to the one true God. Let's move to the next part.